I messed up my trailer, and you guys in the comment section of part one of this series really let me know about it. Finally, the long-awaited part three of the Gooseneck Trailer build series. Look, I put my axles too far to the back of this trailer, and I actually did it on purpose. My plan was originally to tow this trailer with my GMC C3500 HD. That truck can handle the weight of the tongue of this trailer kind of like a semi can. However, since then, I've purchased this truck, a GMC 2500 HD, and this truck is not quite so suited for handling all of that weight. Now, the big advantage of this truck is that I do not need a CDL to drive it with this trailer, and the same cannot be said for my other truck. The plan is to break out the cutting torch and the welder and move these axles forward. I also need to cut off some of these cross members and move those to fit the new axle position. Sounds pretty simple, right? Well, when I built the trailer, I fully welded these cross members in place. The axle mounts are even worse. I welded three passes to secure these in place. I started by disconnecting the axles from the mounts and rolling them out of the way. Okay, so I've broken out the oxyacetylene torch for this, and I have a special tip here with a bend in it, and this is meant for scarfing or gouging, basically removing metal without actually cutting through it. Now, I've never used this for cutting or gouging, but I have seen a YouTube video on it, so I'm basically automatically B-tier at this. Really, I bought this for applying heat to things like nuts and bolts, and it works great for that. In any case, how hard could this be? There we go, that's about right. I'm gonna start with this weld bead right here, which is very easy to access, and so I probably could use an angle grinder on it. However, there are some areas that an angle grinder will not reach, and so I need the practice. Now, before I pull the lever to start cutting or gouging, I'll start by preheating the area. Once the area is red hot, I can start gouging. Alright, that cuts very quickly. That cut was okay, but clearly I needed more practice, so after a little bit of said practice, I was ready for another attempt on camera. I don't think I'm going to win any awards for this, but it was definitely better. Okay, so I left one last vertical segment, and as you can see, it's tricky to get the torch in there, but just imagine how difficult it would be to get an angle grinder in there. Okay, if this cross member comes off with the sledgehammer, I'm gonna say I did a pretty good job. Okay, I see what the problem is. I forgot to cut one of the welds on the bottom over here and then also on this one here. So that's why it's not coming off on this side, but I think I did a pretty decent job otherwise. Awesome, I could probably reuse this too. The rear cross member came off without too much drama. Next, it was time to remove the axle hangers. Because there was so much material to remove, I found it easier to gouge short segments, giving plenty of time to preheat in between. Alright, well 
take a look at that. I definitely got better at this as I went along. Because I have to reuse these brackets, I was a little bit conservative with the torch. And so now I'm gonna fire up the big angle grinder with a seven inch cutoff wheel so that I can cut the rest of the way in there. Wow. I got a lot of flack in parts one and two of this series for using the MIG welding process to build this trailer. But as an example, take a look at these axle hangers and see how much material I had to cut in order to get them off. They were attached so well, there's no way that they were gonna fall off. In response to that criticism, I'm gonna use the dual shield flux core welding process, which I admit is a better process for this application. And the machine I'm gonna use is the HGP Revolution 2500. But first, I needed to do a little bit of cleanup to make these axle hangers ready to install. Okay, I have the first axle hanger clamped in place, and I want to talk about axle positioning because there's not one correct location for the axles. It's really all about trade-offs. So what I've done is I've moved the axles up 19 inches, which is also the same as the spacing of these cross members. And what that does is it makes it convenient for me to take the old cross members and just move them back so that the rear one is 19 inches away from this back here. And it works out really well that way. And of course, moving the axles up 19 inches does two desirable things. Number one, it reduces tongue weight, and number two, it makes it so the trailer can turn tighter corners. I'll start by tack welding this in place on all four corners. I have to say, it's been years since I've used the dual shield flux core welding process, and I forgot how nice it is to weld. It's a buttery smooth process that gets great penetration in thicker materials. I set up a special camera so you can see what I see as I weld, and as you can see, I'm dragging the gun to allow the flux to form a puddle at the trailing edge of the weld bead. I was finding it a little tricky to hold the gun steady in this position, but despite that, you can still get good results with this process. After welding, don't forget to remove your slag. Yeah, that is not coming off. Okay, I got these cross members welded into their new places and the axles are gonna go right here and right here. And so the spacing here makes it so that the tires won't rub on the cross members themselves. As for the deck on this, I'm gonna be using two by eight pine planks, but as for right here where the tires are, I'm gonna use diamond plate and that's gonna save me about an inch to an inch and a half to give me a little bit of extra clearance just to make sure that we don't rub. So a two by eight is about seven and a quarter inches wide. I mean, obviously what were you expecting? So two of them would bring me to about 14 and a half inches wide right here. And that goes to right about here, which is perfect. And then from inside edge to inside edge, it's about 62 and a half inches or at least close enough. I just got back from the steel supplier with this nice new diamond plate. So let's cut this down to size.
Okay, I'm gonna strengthen the edges of this with some 3 16 inch flat bar, and I'm gonna stitch weld this on here rather than doing a continuous seam. To be honest, one of the reasons why it took so long to get around to filming this project is because I was a little bit nervous to use the cutting torch for the first time while being filmed. Even though it's not the first time I did something for the first time on camera. Also, it was easy to put this project on the back burner because I had so many other projects going on. So what's next for this project? Well, I have to build some ramps for it. And these are gonna be really nice because they're gonna be full width ramps that fold flat. So I can use the beaver tail as extra load space. And once I'm done with that, we're getting really close to finishing this project because all that's left is I have to get it sandblasted, I have to paint it, I have to do the electrical wiring, I have to install a deck, and then I can get it inspected so it's legal to use on the road so I can bring home more projects. With that said, thank you guys so much for watching.